all love the Harry Potter movies, but let's admit it, some things didn't play out like how we thought in the books, especially certain characters. And here's how the Harry Potter movies ruined Snape's character. Expelliarmus! Gifts mere mortals can only dream of possessing. How grand it must be. This is your moment. Do it! Go on, Frank! It had to be said, the Severus Snape that Harry Potter moviegoers met is not exactly the Severus Snape that was depicted in the books. In 1997, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the first book in a series that ended 10 years later with a total of seven novels, exposed readers all over the world to J.K. Rowling's fantasy world. From 2001 to 2011, the series' final novel, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, was split into two movies. Don't need your help. I killed Snape. But what if the one never belonged to Snape? What if its allegiance was always to someone? Along with other adaptations, a lot of the original scenes, plots, and characters were lost, while others saw some adjustments. And like we said before, characters like the anti-hero Severus Snape, if you could even call him that. Severus Snape, the potions master at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, was one of the characters who quickly gained popularity and a love-to-hate reputation. He hinted early on in the story that his relationship with the title character would be complicated, but the movie version ended up being very different from the one in the books. After the events of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Severus Snape transitioned from being a potions master to a professor of defense against the dark arts to the position of headmaster at Hogwarts. We can honestly say that the movies did ruin Snape's character, especially since there are striking differences in how he was portrayed. The character of Snape in the movies can be viewed as a lighter version of the book version. For starters, Snape had a chilly and dark attitude and never really tried to hide his hate for his students especially Harry Potter. That one, he made sure everyone knew. In the Harry Potter books, Snape was vengeful and ruthless, continuously torturing his students psychologically and emotionally as opposed to physically as occasionally depicted in the movies. He sometimes allowed his rage to get the better of him, letting it out in some sequences, but in the movie, he was more in control of it. Simply put, he was really just a mean green machine. This made him a highly calculated and controlled person with every action and word he made rarely letting his rage get the better of him. The violent Snape from the books was absent from the movies. Also, contrary to the final hero portrayal the Harry Potter films gave him, Snape is more of a puppet in the books. His objectives and past are the same in both of them, but what differentiates them is how he comes across to other characters and how they respond to him. Although Voldemort utilized him to spy on Dumbledore and the Order of the Phoenix, making him a key weapon for both sides, Albus Dumbledore saw in him a crucial component to defeating Voldemort by infiltrating him. After all this time, but no, of course, we don't blame the actor for this. Although he added his own flair, Alan Rickman's portrayal of the character was among the greatest in the entire series. It wasn't his fault, though, since screenwriters, filmmakers, and Rowling herself were responsible for the movie's gloom and cruelty. Plus, there are other factors to consider, too, like the condensed nature of the plots, characters, and backstories are also important. But I think that if it were up to him, Alan Rickman would have stayed loyal to the book version. R.I.P. Legend, the final Harry Potter book and movie revealed Snape's intentions and history, but readers' and viewers' reactions to it were vastly different. While readers have had a far harder time doing so because they saw a darker, more brutal version of him, the Snape from the movie made it easy for the public to accept his misdeeds as Harry did. Both show an amazing degree of loyalty, although in one version, his actions and intentions are murkier than in the other. Ultimately, each reader or viewer will form their own opinion of Severus Snape based on whatever version they are more accustomed to, or if they have come to know both which version they prefer. Although Snape is a multifaceted character in both, with more room for growth in the books than in the movies, he will always be remembered as one of Harry Potter's most iconic figures and one of the best in all of fiction. Hearing all these, it's safe to conclude that the movie version of Snape is far nicer than the book version because the latter is, honestly, irredeemable, if you ask me. I mean, how could he bear a grudge against Harry when his beef was with James Potter in the first place? It was just downright petty and childish of him 
to vent his anger and frustrations to Harry. When the books ended, it became apparent that he had a grudge against Harry. After all, he did fall in love with Harry's mother, who later wed James Potter and permanently turned down Severus Snape. Because Harry was their son, he represented this rejection. Is it reasonable that Snape felt resentful upon seeing Harry? Yes, anyone would. But despite his best efforts to keep the boy alive, Snape actively set out to make his life miserable since he detested an innocent boy. This was quite offensive, considering Harry was 11 years old when they first met and undoubtedly innocent of any crime. Hood and Wolfbane, they are the same plant which also goes by the name of Akin. But Harry wasn't the only one he tormented. Oh no, there's also poor Neville. Neville Longbottom belonged to one of the most influential families in the Harry Potter universe, and yet there's not an ounce of arrogance in his character. He was a pretty awkward kid, but he was good, just a little bit clumsy and clueless. Mr. Longbottom. Why is it always me? And if anything, Neville had done even less wrong. As far as we know, neither his family nor himself had ever done anything to anger Snape. Neither of his parents even bullied Snape. But because of the bullying he experienced and the misery Snape caused, the professor became Neville's worst nightmare, as was evident when Neville was forced to face a boggart and found himself staring at Snape. It was a brazen abuse of authority that probably ruined Neville's time at school as a whole. Can you believe Snape even attempted to poison his pet toad at one point? And mind you, he also terrorized Hermione by dragging her self-esteem. We all know Hermione Granger as one of the brightest witches of her time, but even she didn't escape from Snape's clutches. Hermione was confident in herself and intelligent enough to do well in his class. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. The root of Asphodel to an infusion of wormwood. so he didn't always succeed as well with her as he did with Neville. But there was that one time when he made a crude remark about her appearance. While she had previously had large teeth, Snape said he saw no difference when she was subjected to a jinx intended to make her teeth grow. Given that Hermione was only 14 years old, this made her cry and was incredibly offensive coming from a grown man and professor at the school. And before we forget, he even called the woman he loved, Lily, a mudblood. Lily, bless her kind heart, acted quickly to defend Snape while he was being bullied by the marauders. And how did he respond to that? By calling her a mudblood. We've all made dumb statements when we were ashamed or hurt, yet he used this phrase, which is an unacceptable slur in the wizarding community, without thinking it through, implying that she was inferior because of her blood. After that comment, Lily made the right choice of ending their friendship, refusing to speak to him ever again, despite his repeated efforts to do so. She had had enough of Snape by that moment, after seeing him for what he truly was. I'm the half-blood prince. I think Miss Bell is lucky to be alive. With that, this has been how the Harry Potter movies ruined Snape's character. 